Hello again everybody and welcome back to Fujit's Blitz with me, Fujit. Hello. Today we're going to be building this bad boy, the Bandai Atat, in one 144 scale. I mean, that's pretty tiny. That's like waterline ship series. This is the box art and as you can see, it's fantastic. The instructions, pretty well detailed, gives you everything you need to know about how to build the Bandai Atat. Now, I'd only ever built one Bandai kit before this, and that was the Snowspeeder. And I've always wanted to build the Atat because, I mean, it's an Atat. Now, the thing is, it's so crisply molded. The problem with Bandai is, I mean, it is all snapped together, really, sort of. You don't need glue. Problem there is, if you were using it as a toy, that's nice, that's fine. But if you go in to sort of paint it and make it look realistic, unfortunately, you can run into a little bit of trouble because the parts are so well engineered. Even the slightest bit of paint can sort of stop them fitting together. So you need to be careful about that. This is what all's in the box. Now, I w I'd love to show you how to paint figures, but these are teeny tiny. So I'm going to just go straight into it. I've built up the cockpit, snapped it together, put a bit of glue in there, now I'm going to prime it with some black primer. Unfortunately, I ran out of my favorite Mr. Hobby black primer. And this is a black primer that I got from AK's range, which is acrylic. And I don't generally get on with acrylic in an airbrush, funnily enough. And I had to persevere a little bit here. And I, I generally like to really thin my paints down quite a lot and build it up slowly, slowly over time uh, and that's what you can see here it's, it's a very thin layer of the acrylic primer and i'm just going to build it up over and over and over again now i've started with the well basically the head or the cockpit or whatever you wish to call it because there are two a attack drivers that go in there and there's a load of there's a load of detail that you're not really going to see unless you have the sort of this part of the head off the model and i don't i'm not going to display it like that but i'm going to paint it all up and i'm going to leave it because you can sort of slide it in and out although you do need to remove all the paint that you're going to build up over time else it just won't move and hopefully you know if worse comes to the worst people can slide it off and have a look inside if they really want to so I'm just priming the whole of the head area at this stage, getting it ready for umpteen different shades of grey. And yeah, I mean umpteen different shades of grey. Not quite 50 shades of grey, but near as damn it. I'm now going to put the light base layer grey on there first. This is, this is basically a light grey. It's a neutral type of grey. In fact, I believe this one was ghost grey, light ghost grey. And then over the top of that, I've, I've sprayed a little bit of dark ghost grey to give it a bit of depth and to sort of really make it pop a little bit. And this is what we're using here. Both of these are Tamiya paints and I've put the descriptions in. And all I'm gonna do is, is basically flood it with this ghost grey paint some of the black will get picked up not a lot and as you can see when it dry the ghost gray dries to a, a sort of bluey color it's not necessarily a gray and it's great if you're building american carrier-based aircraft not so great if you're building a imperial atat or all-terrain armored transporter if i'm being honest but this is just for the interior, and as I said, you're not really going to see the interior in any event. The exterior will get umpteen different coats of different greys, all varying from very dark to very light, to give it that overall tonal effect. And again, as you can see, I am really thin the paint down a lot, and I give it a couple of passes. This is actually the control panel inside of the cockpit of the Atat. And the irony, the, you know, ironically, there are actually controls on that panel. Now, this is scale 1 uh, to 144. I mean, it really is tiny. And then, you know, the controls are literally like a dot. So 
I've got the ghost grey down. Now I'm going to pass it again with the light ghost grey. Again, I want to get some shadows. I want to get it to pop a little bit. And you can start to see here that the, the, the paint is being built up over time. And I'm just going to use the light ghost grey on the raised areas. I'm not going to flood it. So that way you're going to get a tonal differential between the darker ghost grey and the lighter ghost grey. It all gets covered up eventually in any event due to weathering. But the idea is to try and get some shadows in there, some context and some contrast. Because when it comes to the, the, the later stages, that's effectively what makes the model pop. It what, it's what makes the eye draw you to certain parts of the model. Well, I think so anyway. So this is what I'm doing here. As you can see, I'm not flooding the entire areas. I'm just picking out spots. And then I go to a lighter grey, and I'm just going over it again, picking out those spots, not flooding it, not painting the entire thing. And then you're just getting this, because the paint is so, so, so thin, you're getting you know you're getting the shadows in there and you're getting the contrast between the one layer to the next layer and you're getting highlights where highlights should be and you're getting recesses in shadows where recesses in shadows generally should be so that's effectively what i'm doing here i'm just slowly slowly building it up over time very light layers i mean i think i fin it about to about 80% thin. Now this is what the cockpit looks like. Look how tiny those figures are. And you know, the cockpit comes out a little bit bluer because I've used just ghost gray there. But if you look at the movie, it is slightly blue. And that there is the lighting playing havoc with it. You've got the control panel and you know, there's two control panels. It's pretty, pretty cool. But those men, those ATAT drivers are absolutely minuscule. I'd love to show you the, me painting them but I just couldn't get the camera to focus. I want to show you this. The, these are kit bashes, and you can see there, that's an axle, by the way. That was an axle of a Sherman, Tamiya Sherman tank, and the driver's hatch of a T-34. And there, you just saw a couple of jerry cans. This is the main body, it very easily goes together. And I just want to show you, this, this is brilliant. I mean, you, you shine a light through this, and it shines up just like you see in the movie. It's fantastic, and everything works. I mean, it's so well engineered. It is truly fantastic. The legs work perfectly. And it's all snapped together, no glue. And, you know, I, I must admit, I'd never really made anything from Bandai, and this was just fantastic. It was such a beautiful model to build. So was the Snow Speeder, to be fair. As I said, the only downside was if too much paint, it, it tends to be a problem. So now we're going to go and just layer lots of different greys over the main body. And again, highly thinned, and I'm, I'm doing it in an up and down motion. The reason I'm doing that is because I, I want to get some sort of subtle streaking effects. I know it doesn't work because it gets all covered up eventually anyway by the other layers of paint. But you, you can sort of get this cloudy pattern. Um, aircraft painters do it all the time aircraft modelers even, where they sort of do a cloudy pattern. And they don't sort of just blast it with one colour. And that's what I'm trying to get here. I don't want it all one colour. I want a cloudy, off sort of set colour base here. And it allows me to then, when I'm layering the other greys later on, I can build it up slowly, slowly, slowly. And as you can see here, I'm still let, letting a lot of the black shine through. And I'm just not inundating the model with this grey paint. Now, this is a different grey to the ghost grey. This is a neutral grey, a Tamiya neutral grey. And what I'm doing, this is the base layer. This is going to be the darkest grey that I use, funnily enough. So this is the darkest. Now, if you have a look at Atats in the movie... They're a very, very light grey. In fact, they're incredibly light. Um, so that's the effect we're going for. We're going for movie at at look, not model at at. Um, and, and that is what I've always had in mind. 
And, and I wanted to go down that road, which is why these panes are being picked out. It's a shame that I'm going to cover that panel. I mean, there's so much detail in there. That would have been, you know, you could have picked so much detail out. But the panel is going to be covered up completely. Um, so there's not really much point in me doing anything with it. And as you can see, I'm just doing this streaking effect, getting the cloudy type pattern into the paint to help me at a later stage. And I'm keeping the black just showing through. And those areas that I want to highlight more, then I, I give it an extra spurt. Now I'll go back to the cockpit, stroke whatever it was called, the head. And again, we're now going to layer up that first layer of dark neutral gray. And again, I'm not going to just blast the gray there. As you can see, I'm just picking out areas, I'm letting the paint do its thing. I've got the, the airbrush on a very low setting and I've got the airbrush nozzle turned all the way down. So it's only thin amounts of paint coming out. It, it's a, you know, if I had it all the way up, it'd be blasting everywhere. Now I'm going to go over it with the lighter gray. And this is what I'm doing now. This is the lighter gray. And I'm just, just going to layer that over. Oh no, this isn't the lighter gray. I'm lying. I'm such a fool. This is still the darkish gray. And this is basically just the base coat. And there are lots of other coats to come. Um, and, you know, I thought it'd be really boring to paint a model gray. To be honest now I, i'm normally an armor model and i make tanks and i, I avoid as much as possible doing pre-germ pre, you know early war german stuff because it's all gray but this one was really interesting because if you've got the right and you know you can really play around with because this is the light to the next it's a medium gray actually that's going on now it's more of a sky gray so it's not the lightest it's, it's not even the sky gray, I'm lying again. This is the medium gray. So I've already done the neutral gray, now I'm sticking a medium gray, and as you can see, it's starting to slowly lighten the main body of the ATAT. -AT. And again, I'm not going over everything, I'm concentrating on certain areas, trying to keep that contrast in there, but trying to tie everything together. That's, in fact, what I'm trying to do. Um, you can see here that we're still getting this, I'm still doing the streaking effect and you're still getting the black showing through from the primer and you've got the, the medium, the, the dark grey showing through also. And this really is the effect I'm going for. I'm going for building it up over time. Again, the paint is very, very thin. And as you can see, here, I'm getting this subtle streaking. Now, as I said, a lot of this will change when we get to the weathering stage. You know, it, it's not going to be left like this, obviously. All this is showing you at the moment is how we are going to build up the various layers of grey paints, varying from dark to incredibly light, to get the effect that we want, which is not an over if you look at the movie atats they're not just one color gray there is this variation and the atats in the movies were models i mean they were bigger than this they were uh, they were pretty big models actually i think they were about 170 second but they were pretty big models and the model makers used all the techniques that all model makers use which is going from the top to the bottom having the highlights which we'll get to in the weathering stage and that's the effect that we're looking for here. We're looking to, you know, not get lots of, oh, and I just want to show you the snow speeder. It is tiny. This came with the main snow speeder, the 148 version, but this is 1144. I mean, it really is a tiny snow speeder. I would love to have showed you how I painted it. It is all painted. I've used none of the decals, none of the transfers. It is all painted by hand. And it really was difficult because you can see it is unbelievably tiny, really teeny, teeny, tiny. And I've never, ever painted anything that small before. So it was a challenge for me, but I, I enjoyed it. And there it is next to the 148th version of the snow speeder. And as you can see, you know, it is a big difference <laughs> in size. Anyway, back to the Atat. So we've got all the basic paint grays down we've gone from as i said light a uh, dark to light now we're going to start doing the oil wash so 
I started with an oil wash. It wasn't working well for me um, for whatever reason. So I, I changed it to an, uh, an enamel wash. Same, same. But I think it was because I used the, I, I used gloss rather than satin. I should have used satin to be fair. But I glossed it with the varnish to seal the, the colors in. And I really shouldn't have done that. I should have used a satin. Had I've used a satin, it would have been much easier. But anyway, this is basic. This is the, the, the initial pin wash, basically. So we're just blasting it on there and then leave it for about 10 minutes so it's dry. And then we just go around with a little bit of thinner and tidy it all up. At the same time with the thinner, you can sort of start bringing down some streaking effect. Although I am gonna use different streaking effects later with different MIG products. This one, as I said, I started off with um, an Abtile and grease, uh, it, it, engine grease oil paint, but it, it wouldn't work. It wasn't flowing as well. So I moved to a MIG dark wash. And that's what you can see me applying here. This is the MIG dark wash. I'm just applying it, you know, pretty heavy handed because when I get the, the the thinner on it, a lot of it is going to be removed, to be honest with you. And I generally let it dry for about 15, 10, 15, sometimes even 20 minutes. And I find the longer you let it dry, I mean, don't leave it dry for two hours because then you won't be able to remove it. But I find that the longer you let it dry, the easier it is to manipulate the uh, the actual wash, the, the enamel wash. And this is what I'm doing now. I'm just manipulating it. So... I'm, I'm, I'm doing some initial streaks. This, uh, this is not the streaking effect. This is some initial streaks, which will be tidied up. I will add, at a later date, I will add, well, later date, later in the video, I will add a streaking effect for winter vehicles. Unfortunately, one of the things I didn't show you was that I'd also added a lot of oil paint especially at the bottom and the top. At the bottom, I used that engine grease from Abtile and the 501. And I didn't use, I used a dry brush and just rubbed it in to get that sort of dirty look at the bottom of the at At the top, I used the, the white, flat white. And again, I no, uh, there was no thinner on the brush just to bring it around and, and lighten it up at the top. You know, it was basically just dabbing it around. Now you can see I'm going around and I'm tidying up the wash. Um, I've got my initial streaking effects. And now I'm going in and I'm tidying it all up, trying to make it look realistic, trying to make it look like they really are streaks. Now, again, if you look at the movie model of the at, -At it is incredibly filthy. They are dirty. I mean, they, the, the guy, the model makers who, who worked on the Empire Strikes Back must have had a whale of a time weathering their at, at because they really are filthy. And I've tried to replicate what you see in the movie as much as I can, to be honest with you. Now, we've done the pin wash. Now, this actually isn't the pin wash. This is now, I've, I've gone back and I've put the streaking effects for winter vehicles on. And now I'm just streaking it down from those areas that when I looked at the reference sources, and there are lots of reference sources about on the at, at those were the areas that you had all this streaking effect. And all I'm going to do is I've got a little bit of thinner on the brush, and I was just manipulating it. Now I'm going to move to the base, and I've just got a little piece of wood, and I'm going to use MIG acrylic mud for dioramas, dry earth ground this one mainly because I ran out of the snow. <laughs> so what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna paste it on, as you do, let it dry. I don't know why I'm showing so much of this video, but I'm just pasting it on, and it's gonna be my snow ground, actually. And it, it, it's, it's gonna work. This is dry, so this is the dry earth. So there isn't, there isn't a lot of sort of lumps in it. And I think it makes, quite an effective snowy base, especially at this scale, because this is a really small scale. It's not big, you know. And then I'm just gonna put the at, at on it and sort of press it down and press it in and try and get some, I don't want it levitating, let's put it that way. 
Now I'm going to, I've sprayed it, already sprayed it primer black. Now I'm just going to go over various greys. I'm going to start with the, the, the dark grey. And you can see the paints here. I've got a dark grey. Well, this is a, yeah, this is a dark grey. Then I've got a medium grey, a very light grey. And then the last one is white. And again, these are incredibly thin. They're very thin. I mean, this is like 90% thinner, 10% paint. And all I'm doing is, I'm not trying to get into the crevices. I want the crevices to remain black. And I, I'm spraying around those crevices with this incredibly thin paint. And it's going to leave some of the shadow and pick up some of the contrast. And when I then put the next shades on, that's what we're going to get. We're going to be building it up, building it up, building it up. Because if you look at snow, snow is not just white. There are lots of different colors in there. There are lots of grays in there. And I want to, to replicate that. I want it to get that kind of thing coming out in the diorama base. So uh, I think I spent too much time showing you me spraying a piece of wood. Sorry about that. Um, but yeah, you know, it happens. So I'm just going to keep building it up and building it up and building it up. And it will be built up over time. So we finally get to this. I don't know. It's not going to look like Hoff. I mean, at this scale, I think it does the right thing, to be honest with you. I mean, it doesn't look like it at the moment, obviously. So this is the next layer. This is the medium gray. And again, it's incredibly thin. Again, 90% thinner, 10% paint. And it, 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 it. it it's done on purpose because if I, if it was any more than that, if it wasn't overly thin, then all I'm going to be doing is spraying a grey base. Uh, and I don't want that. That's not what I'm after. I want to keep those shadows and contrasts. And I want the paint to flow and stick. That is why I thin it so heavily. I mean, I'm going to go back with second and third passes on areas that I need to be a bit lighter. But generally... I don't want, I want to keep the shadows and the contrasts and I want to try and build the base up to have a realistic ground effect. So once we've done that, we move on to the next one, which is the light gray. So this is the very, this is the light gray now. And as you can see, we're just going to spray it all over the place and it will stick to the areas it needs to stick and it will flow to the areas that it doesn't need to flow to and again it will because it's so thin and because i'm spraying it now from a bit of a distance and i've opened the airbrush up a little bit more we're going to get some good contrast with that paint that's the idea anyway i mean i don't know and now i'm going to just go back and do a little bit of touching up on those areas that i really want to be light um, so now I'm just I've closed the airbrush nozzle again. Now I'm getting a bit closer to the base, and I'm just spraying those areas that I want to be incredibly light, not overly dark. So I mean, slowly, slowly we build it up, and it, much like when you build the attack, you, you're concentrating on trying to get where the light and the shadow is. This is the final base. This is the final layer. Sorry, on the base. That's the white. And this is really thin. I mean, this is 95% thinner and only 5% paint in real terms because now we've got to saturate the base and we've got to keep those shadows of all those layers that we've built up, but we've got to have the tops of the little drifts and the little troughs, the little peaks, they've got to be white because it's snow. You know, the hoth where the Atats were seen is a snowy icy planet so this is what we're going to be aiming for here we're trying to get that snowy effect with a medium that isn't actually snow let's be honest i mean i use dry earth <laughs> um and i'm trying to turn that into snow but i i think it i think it worked i think it actually worked just about um i had to go back and sort of pick out areas that needed to be white because with the paint being so thin the, the, the grey bases were starting to show through a bit more than I anticip anticipated but it's not a problem and this is me just going back and picking out those areas those highlights which are basically the peaks and the troughs 
And that's all I'm trying to do here. Just get those highlights in. Anyway, it's now time for the final reveal. And this is my Bandai 1 144 scale at at with snow speeder. And I've tried to model the wedge and tilly snow speeder from the movie where he hits the harpoon into the rear leg of the at at. And that's what we've got here. Unfortunately, I haven't got a strong enough wire that's thin enough to keep the darn thing stable enough when it's on the rotating turntable. Anyway, I'll just have to live with it. Thing is, I love this model. I thought it was an absolute pleasure. It's a weatherer's dream, but it's an absolute pleasure to build a model like this. I was a bit apprehensive at first, what with it being grey and everything about it grey. But as I said, there's so much you can do with just a mundane palette of one colour, which is grey. And, you know, I loved every minute of it. Here's a close-up of the snow speeder. As I said, this is all painted by hand, and this is meant to be Wedge Antilles snow speeder. So I, I'm quite happy with the way it came out, considering how small it is. I mean, it really is tiny. Um, and I, mean, I can't overemphasize how tiny that thing is, but it's come out okay. And then this was the thinnest wire I could use to absolutely keep the snow speeder up. And it's just drilled into the leg and then drilled into where the tow cable comes on the, on the snow speeder from the movie. Um, but the, I mean, the, the real thing, the real joy about this model was the weathering. I mean, this is just a close-up of the base with the uh, with the feet. And as you can see, you can really do a lot with just some, you know, AK dry mud effect. But the weathering, I mean, that is where this model comes to life. And it, it, there's lots of layers of different oils and different this and different that. And it's just built it up to give this overall grimy appearance. Now, I looked on the on, on the various screenshots of the movie model, and there's no rust. So that's why you can't see any rust effects on this model. There was no rust applied on the movie models, just grime. So that's all I've done here. I've just added the grime and, you know, gone through various different textures and shades for the greys, did the streaking effects, and I, I think it bears a resemblance to, you know, the screenshots I've seen from the movie at at. I enjoyed this model. I had great fun making it. It took, well, not that long. I mean, Bandai models are a joy to play with, to be honest with you. And like I said, you don't need any glue, really. I use glue mainly because I needed to have things stuck together, etc., etc., but I loved every single second of this build. The legs are a bit of a pain in the backside. I mean, you need to paint the model without the legs attached because the legs just get in the way of everything. But, I mean, it's a dream model to build. Now, I know it's an older model and, you know, you may not, they're pretty rare to get your paws on, I believe, in certain parts of the world. Um, I got this one shipped to me from America. Um, it didn't cost me that much. It cost more than it would have when it first came out, but you know the price was still relatively reasonable. You know, just some close-up detail of that weathering. Uh, you can see that there's a lot of grime and soot, and everything can you know congealed in there, and it gives the uh, the real overall authentic authentic look to how it looked in the movie. And with that, I decided to do a bit of experimentation, and here we go. Yeah, just a little bit of fun trying to see how it would look against a green screen. Unfortunately, I don't have a great green screen, so I wasn't able to do much with it. But I think it's turned out okay. But like I said, I don't have a proper green screen setup. But anyway, I'm going to leave you with some static pictures instead, showing you a bit more of those close up details. Uh, I have to apologize, I, I'm not really, I'm getting more used to doing videos on models i'm still not there yet so bear with me this is only like my third or fourth video and i'm still a bit of a novice at it but it is going to get there in time anyway i'd love to know your comments and everything below um i'm planning on doing a lot more of these videos in fact i'm about to start a boba fett 
from Bandai. I've just had the perfect grade Millennial Falcon turn up. On top of that, I've also got a Tamiya Spitfire that I'm halfway through. So, you know, hopefully I'll get better as we go along. And I can hopefully show you a lot more tips and hints and tricks and get my camera to work a lot better. Anyway, by all means, comment and everything below. And until the next time, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed making this model and making this video. And I hope to see you all again soon. I'll leave with these pictures. And until the next time, stay safe and hope to catch you on the flip side. Bye for now.